Well, I didn't expect to be able to post another classic Doctor Who review so soon. Stuff happened, and here we go. Robots, the first episode of the 12th season of Doctor Who, first broadcast in four parts from the 28th of December 1974 to the 18th of January 1975. Yay! The first episode starred Tom Baker as the Doctor. Hey, and another great one. And while Tom Baker has become synonymous with the role of the Doctor over the years, he still had some pretty big shoes to fill, as from what I understand, John Pertwee was still quite a popular Doctor, but Tom Baker did it and made it his own. Surprisingly, with most of the other Doctors, they usually need at least one story to kind of get their footing, which they usually regard to regeneration, discomposure and the like, but this Doctor, while well, he has a bit in part one where he does need to rest, most of the time he just gets on with it. So the Doctor, played by Tom Doctor has just regenerated into the new version played by Tom Baker, and as expected, he's a little discombobulated, but the Brigadier, put, played by Nicholas Courtney, puts him in the hands of a of unit's medical examiner, Harry Sullivan. Tells him to keep an eye on him. Meanwhile, while this is going on, Sarah Jane Smith, played by Elizabeth Sladen, asks the Brigadier if he can get her a military-issue press pass to an organisation called Think Tank, full of bright, full of important scientific minds, to which he agrees. She visits Think Tank, but then discovers they are in possession of something called the K-1 robot, a robot that seemingly has feelings, can feel remorse, but is seemingly programmed to continue its objective, even though they demonstrate it can't harm a human when they order it to attack her, and it doesn't. Meanwhile, Unit and the Doctor, once he's kind of gotten ready, investigate a series of robberies, including robbery of a part for a disintegrator gun, and later the disintegrator gun itself, as well as a point when it breaks into someone's house and breaks into a safe. The safe contained nuclear launch codes from a deal made between three countries a couple of years prior. However, it turns out that Think Tank are also members of something called the SRS, the Scientific Reform Society, a group who, in the episode, who in the story, believe that the world's government should step down and leave them in charge, and they're prepared to use nuclear weapons in order to make the world compliant. Now, of course, the main villain of the two main characters who they kind of establish in this story are Hilda Winters, played by Patricia Maynard, who is, she's a villain who, she's such fun. I mean, you know that she's the bad guy, she knows she's the bad guy, and she's just having fun with it. I mean, you love to hate her, and frankly, there are moments, especially in kind of part three and part four, where I just saw her being so delectably evil, and I was like, yes, yeah, I hate you, but I love you for it. And you've also got uh, a character named Jeremiah Kettlewell, who is the creator of the K-1 robot, and who constantly said, no, they can't have taken control of it. I mean, they, I mean, that, I commissioned that robot, they'd never be able to understand it until he's revealed to be part of SRS. Fun, fun side note, he's played by Edward Burnham, who is actually making his second appearance in Doctor Who, after previously playing Professor Watkins in 1968's The Invasion. Yeah, nice job. And I will admit, it's a good story for Tom Baker's first story. I will admit it's not perfect. There are certainly some bad effects used later on, especially in part three and part four. For example, in part three, uh, when the robot is brought out to kind of protect the base, the Brigadier says he is something that will take care of it, and they use a trick with perspective. Like you can see the robot kind of blurry in the background, and then they kind of bring close to the camera what's evidently now a remote-controlled toy tank. And it's a little embarrassing. I mean, just not, not just because the robot easily vanquishes the tank, which is part of the story, but also it's... While it may have looked... Go good in the 1970s when this was broadcast. 
it does look a little embarrassing now when you compare it to today's effects. Just having this obvious toy tank rolling in front of the screen to try and make it look bigger with this robot in the background. Also, the other effect that I will say is kind of laughably bad is uh, in part four, they, the Brigadier attempts to use the disintegrated gun to destroy the robot. But due to the robot being made of something called living metal, it ends up growing. Growing to about two stories high. And it ends up kind of capturing Sarah Jane and holding her in its grasp as it marches through the city. Determined to destroy humanity. But you know, there are some effects where it's kind of clearly green screen using a toy robot and grasping a Barbie. And yeah, I will admit some of the effects are a little dated. And I, I will admit today's effects aren't always perfect. But sometimes looking back it is kind of laughably bad how bad they are. But you know what? This is still a great episode, great story and a great first outing for Tom Baker as the Doctor. I mean... He, most doctors take a little while to get going. Tom was straight out the gate, and he made a brilliant story. I mean, one of my favourite parts, I will admit, is when he's trying to choose his costume. I mean, we all know Tom Baker's costume: brown coat, long stripy scarf. But when you see what he went through with his costume scene in order to get there, it's kind kind of lovely bad that the long stripy scarf and the fedora are possibly the least weird thing he wore that day. I mean, he goes from a Viking, like, do you think I might attract your attention? It's just possible. One moment. Starts off as a Viking, comes out as the Jack of Hearts, then goes for a Harlequin Jester, before finally settling on the brown coat with the stripy scarf. It's like, how's this? Like, much better, Doctor. Now, if you're quite finished with your wardrobe, I'll try again if you like. No, let's just stick with that, please. I mean... When you think the long stripy scarf is probably the most subtle thing he wore in that episode, it's just so much fun. Plus, while I do still admit I think John Pertwee was my favourite of the classic Doctors, I do now see why people love Tom Baker so much. And why he ultimately became one of the most classic Doctors. You know what, for his first story, it's brilliant. That's all I'll say about robots. But anyway, I said in my last one I had a plan. I mean, one of my past reviews, I've gone from the Keeper of Truck and straight back to Robot. So, at the end of Tom Baker's era, right back to the start. But, as I said, I had a plan. And if you look, it would have been about there. If you're watching this from the playlist, then you've seen me review An Earthly Child. I've just done Robot. I've done Castro Valva. I've done The Twin Dilemma. I've done... Time and the Rani, and I've done Doctor Who the movie. What's missing? <laughs> I think you can work it out. Anyway, until then, see ya.